Fraser Centre here in Dagenham, Essex. For tonight's European Championship Boxing proudly presented for Barry Hearn for Matchroom Sport and sponsored by Lansdowne Recovery Specialist and Pokemillion.com for a great game of online poker. All the officials appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control here present at ringside and a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us. Live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. Joining us for the very best ringside action. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds for the vacant Southern Area Super Bantamweight Championship. The Southern Area representative is Mr. Lex Lederman at ringside. Timekeeper at the bell is Greg Hume and referee in charge of the action is Mr. Ian John Lewis. They are the officials this time to meet the contestants for this Clayton Championship, introducing to you. Firstly, and fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the white cross. He weighed in at 8 stone, 9 pounds, 13 ounces and brings a 14 fight record. 12 wins, 2 losses. He comes to the ring as the former ABA champion from Hackney, East London. It's Ian Necker. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, trimmed with white, weighing in at 8 stone, 9 pounds, 7 ounces, bringing a 26 fight record, 16 wins, 4 inside the scheduled distance, 9 losses and 1 draw. He's from Barking. Please welcome Mark Callagher. <laughs> so, sports fans and Sky Sports fans, here we go. 10 rounds of boxing for the vacant. Southern Area Super Bantamweight Championship. Boxers, I am the referee. Obey my command at all times. You bow down the rules, watch the heads, kick them punches up. When I shout break, you break clean. And remember, defend yourself at all times. Check hands. Well, this could be an interesting fight. Southern Area Super Bantamweight title. Last chance, possibly for Mark Callahan, who's coming off that 10th round stoppage defeat against Michael Hunter for the British Super Bantamweight title. He needs to win this against Ian Napper, who's been in the uh, comeback stakes over the last 13 months or so. This is the fourth fight of his comeback after a three-year absence from the ring. We thought he'd retired. A former neat and classy amateur with a lot of skills, but somehow he's been a classic example of a good amateur whose talent hasn't quite transferred itself to the professional business. He badly needs this win as well, Jim. Yeah, I think so. I think a requirement for pro boxing, especially when you get into longer distance fights, you must have a bit of snap in your punches. You don't have to be a knockout artist, so you have to discourage other people. Napa hasn't stopped any of his 12 wins. Uh, he's uh, slightly, vertically challenged, if you like, uh, at five foot one. So I think this, this game is really going to be a struggle for him. If you don't have any kind of punch, then you've really got to be exceptional in some of the other departments. Uh, I don't know if Ian Napa is quite that, so good luck to him, but, it, but I'd say it's going to be a struggle. Remember, he won his English ABA title at light flyweight. It's uh, around the seven and a half stone mark just over and here he is fighting tonight at eight stone nine and three quarters he looks a lot heavier than when he was the flyweight protege of his early days in the professional business Callahan has been around a little bit now 16 wins nine defeats one draw his record a bit low with one of those black trunks by the way Callahan in case you need the identification got his name written on his shorts that should help you well, if Napa can uh, keep the speed up at this weight division, it will certainly help. Uh, I've already ma mentioned his power. So if he can do this in speedy, definitely a lovely boxer, nice variety of punches, lovely moves. So he'll be looking for a points victory here, no doubt. Where Napa could have an advantage will be in skills and hand speed. But is he going to be able to go 10 hardish rounds here? What's his commitment to the business these days? <coughs> is the desire there? We'll see. All those questions about to be answered, we hope, anyway. 
Yeah, and at this level, uh, Callahan is a hard night's work for anyone when he's been stepped out or, or up a couple of times. He's maybe been found slightly wanting, but at this level, he can give anybody a tussle. It's nice and neat on his feet and light there, just skipping out of range, making Callahan miss. Now, for he's always had bags of ability, but he hasn't got ticks in all the right boxes, not yet anyway, certainly not in the pro business. Just a little bit of a, a scouting mission for both, I think, in uh, the first round. Nobody committing themselves, uh, not much to choose there. One jab. One jab. Jab, dip, throw the right hand. Right side here. Here's Mark Callaghan, who does uh, points losses against some of the leading fighters around his weight, Dazzo Williams, John Simpson, Jamie McKeever. And he was beaten as well in three rounds by Roy Rutherford, another former British champion at featherweight. Fighting tonight at super bantamweight and the Southern Area title is on the line here. Ian Napper in the white trunks. He used to come into the ring, I seem to remember, in a sort of Roy Jones kind of bib and tucker with uh, all kinds of trimmings as well, shades. Didn't bother with any of that tonight. Yeah, well, I think big things were expected of him, and I think he expected big things himself back then, but then he found uh, amateur boxing, pro boxing, two totally different sports. But he's picking them nicely here, he's slipping the jab. Callahan's reaching with the punches from a wide stance, so easily countered, and he doesn't have the mobility to step away from him. Look how wide his stance is, so when he misses with a punch, he's not in any position to get himself out of there. And Napa has been uh, not quite punishing him, but uh, picking him with little nifty punches. Not missing at the moment. Neither fighter really prepared to commit, but Napa surely will be trying to win this on his boxing style and skills and speed you'd think that would be the plan as Jim was saying he's never stopped an opponent yet in his 12 victories he's only had 14 fights in his eight years since he turned professional but dangerous sometimes now for the way he slips as an opponent comes forward we just missed a, a horrendous clash of heads they just did it as I was speaking there I mean we could see actually there was a clash of heads there he come off worse so we can actually see a horrendous clash of heads with that little movie makes. It's not intentional, but it's dangerous. Waiting too long, Callahan unable to apply pressure. Just a bit worried about being countered by Napa, who does have the hand speed advantage. The reason he's being countered, he's not really committing himself. He's, he's trying to do it at arm's length when he should be trying to impose himself on Napa. Napa certainly has the speed of punch in his favour. Just a slightly thicker set, Ian Napa, than we're used to seeing these days. He is 27 now, looking to give his new career a real kickstart here. Well, he's not a, a puncher napper, but he's, he's, he's gritty enough. He can stand his ground, he can push up inside and uh, use his body weight. So he's certainly strong enough, although not a puncher. He's making Callahan miss an awful lot as well. Just looking to pick him off with jabs like that. I just don't think Callahan's fired up enough uh, to make an impact against a boxer like Napa at the moment. No, nothing wrong with that, what's the point? They see, that was the clash of heads that Napa come off worse, but a couple of times he almost caused even worse clashes, but that, uh, that could have, uh, have a word with his head ref as the ringside of the head seen one. Third round, due to go 10 for the Southern Area title. Mark Callahan still top 10 ranked in this country as well, and Napa hoping here for what would be his most significant pro win, I would suggest. He did come a cropper against the high-class Jason Booth, decisively on points, and was stopped in eight by Peter Colshaw, another of our top flyweights. Defeats which discouraged him and in the end made him walk away from the sport for a long time. But he's had three wins so far since he came back, but uh, this is another level again.
I mean, there's no doubting he's a talented boxer, so it's possibly maturity will improve him as a fighter. So at 27 now, maybe he's that little bit stronger, a little bit grittier, so maybe he'll get some results through that. Still way out of range. Callahan not really able to apply any intensity of pressure at all. In fact, a lot of fresh air is being whipped up in this arena with missed punches. Yeah, I think Callahan has to be prepared to, to, to exchange punches. He's trying to do it without being caught. But I think uh, he's naturally bigger, probably a little bit stronger. He should be prepared to trade, take a couple, to land a couple, just to make some sort of impact on Napa. Napa's too cute and they're uh, comfortable at the moment. Again, the punch is missing. And so far, this third round has resembled the biggest crowd ever assembled for shadow boxing. Callahan is in danger of being frustrated by Napa, but that is exactly what Ian Napa should be planning. It's whether he can land with smart little counters and clever moves of his own to get a few punches off himself. I just think he's trying to outbox a boxer. I don't see much point in that. He should be using his own advantages. He should be putting on a bit of pressure, putting punches together, draw Nasa into more of a battle. He's trying to outbox him. That's where he wants to be, Callan. closer in. He's more natural at this sort of weight, you'd think, wouldn't you? Well, it's warming up a bit more now. This is much better. They're really going at it now. Last is starting to round. Rouse themselves after a couple of uh, rather wild two minutes at the start of the round. Callum just beginning to get in with some quite decent shots in the last minute or so of the round. Yeah, and the corner there, they're telling Ian Napper to throw straighter punches, Jim. Yeah, but I just think get that little bit closer. He's boxing well, he's making Callahan miss a lot, but maybe not punishing him with the counters the way he should be doing. Because I think at the moment Callahan's uh, boxing a fight that suits Napa. He should be a bit more intensity needed from Callahan. Callahan, by the way, now trained by Roy Callahan, no relation. Used to be with uh, Colin Lake, Lake. So a new team with him and Ian Napper with Brian Lawrence, one of Nigel Ben's many trainers, in the corner with the former European champion James Cook. So an experienced team there. A nice little bust again from Napa. But uh, just a pity he can't develop a bit more devil, a bit more snap in those punches. Yeah, that's been a big problem for him. Right hand gets in by Callahan. That was in problems, I would say, in this fight if Callahan starts to find him regularly. I thought about him of the inside of the glove with that one, but it found the target anyway. A oh, lovely uppercut from Napa. You just see little, little bits of class coming from him, but uh, you feel he can do that a little bit better. Well, in his amateur days, he used to get rave reviews, didn't he, for his boxing skills. He boxed in the World Championships in 1997 as an England star. And that was nice. Stepping back from the double jab in the right hand counter, that was cute. Bags of ability there, can he translate it though into some tangible professional success? That's the question. Well, Callahan's still boxing at a pace that Napa's happy with. You would think uh, Callahan would want to draw him into more of a battle. Callahan might just be the, the stronger. Well, we'll see about that. He's looking to push Napper back and shove him about on the rare occasions they do get to work on the inside, and it hasn't been often. 
in a long fight you can use up a little bit of steam with that pushing back and pushing on but uh, I suppose that's back in the olden days when I did it <laughs> over the 15 rounds, 10 rounds I don't suppose it's the same problem. Maybe Napper just using his extra boxing skills in this round to get the better of the argument slightly. What do you think, Jim? Yeah, well, Callahan seems to have some doubts in his mind. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, the, you, look, you look at Napa's stop his record, you must think, well, I can take some chances against this fellow. But Callahan a little bit slow to take those chances. Well, he kind of knew the sort of problems he'd be facing tonight, Jim. Yeah, but I mean, I, I thought his basic plan would be to draw Napa into a war, but he's just a little bit hesitant. Uh, I don't know why, as I say, that the punching power is not the problem. They just, they should be drawing Napa into a battle here. Come out for action again. Mark Callahan, the former fireman, whose father and uncle were both ex-professional boxers. Getting a little bit late in his career, possibly now. I wonder whether his confidence has been badly sapped by what happened to him against Michael Hunter when he had that well some said surprise chance to win the British title it didn't work out for him so it could be that this is a fight on the way up a stepping stone on the way up as Napa might see it and something on the way down for Callahan. you could argue it that way yeah well you? Callahan subconsciously may feel that he's had his chance and it's not likely to to present itself again, but I don't think so because he's, I mean, he's a proud young kid. I've seen him in loads of good fights. Actually, I've never seen him in a bad fight. A couple of times he's been out of his depth, but uh, at his own level, I've never seen him in a bad fight. He's just trying to outbox a boxer here. A little bit of showmanship there from Napa. Yes, a sort of uh, fighting equivalent of psycho babble, really, I think, there from Napa. Playing possum, as Lennox Lewis used to call it pretending to be hurt, almost trying to take the mickey out of Callahan. Didn't really need to do that. Going back to this uh, outer range, uh, missing again. That was better, stepped in with that one. Both of them quite circumspect, though. Lots of fainting from Napa. So I think Napa's the natural counter-puncher, so he wants uh, Callahan to come up himself a bit more than he's doing. So we're having little lazy spells now and again. Really is cat and mouse at times in there. A few mind games going on. I think Napa quite enjoys this sort of psychological warfare. Looks like he does, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he's happy because he loads of room to work. I mean, Callahan should be trying to back him up until his back touches the ropes and let go bursts of punches but he's, he's, he's boxing them out in the centre of the ring and uh, for me that's not the place to be to be doing what he's doing he should be a bit more pressure not at long range well, with a little left hook there but there's a left of the body too from Napa so he's got to up the tempo you feel really Callahan almost try a little bit of the tactics that work for Ricky Hatton. High tempo, high paced pressure. See if he can cut Napa off on the corners, pin him up against the ropes, bustle him up a bit. At the moment he's fighting Napa's kind of fight. At ringside we have a European super bantamweight champion, Isham Pickering, also Spencer Oliver, European champion as well. Let's hear from them with Ed Robinson. Well, Isham, has Na Napa's boxing caught your eye yet? I really like Napa's style. He reminds me of a little James Tony. You know, he's a nice little slick, so it's a good little match, this. And uh, I think I've just got Napa just, just nipping it at the moment. It's a good fight. I feel Callaghan's just squatting down to Napa's, Napa's size. I feel Napa's a flyweight blown up to a super bantamweight, really, but I feel he's nicking it. He's doing a good fight. Spencer, surely Callaghan should commit himself more? That's, that's the problem here. I mean, Napa is just stealing the rounds at the moment because Callahan's giving him too much respect, standing back too much. I mean, Callahan's a super, super, really a super featherweight drain down here. His box is high as 9 5. 
You know, Ian Napper is really only a pumped up flyweight, so Callahan needs to start applying the pressure more. Thank you, Spencer. Congratulations, by the way, to Isham Pickering. Great win for him over Miguel Dallon in Spain. Tenth round stoppage to retain his European title. Not easy as well to win away. Well done, Isham. Back to this one. White trunks of Ian Napper. Maybe just ever so slightly outboxing Mark Callahan so far in this one. It's the sixth round of ten for the Southern Area title. Yeah, well, at the end of the previous round, in that, uh, Callahan put his hand up to touch gloves uh, with Napa, as though it was a little exhibition. I think he's got the wrong mentality. I think he should be in a bad mood here. I think he should be thinking, this little fellow stealing this fight away from me, and I'm going to do something about it. I don't think he should be congratulating him for it in the process. So just a bit more snap, a bit more ambition. Get himself in amongst Napa. Yes, he's got to want it badly here. Mark Callahan, because this is a fight really to try to resurrect his career. That's how he should be seeing it. But again, he's waiting and he's frustrated, and he can't just nail the very, very elusive Napa. But he's still trying to outbox Napa, and that, that, for me, that's the problem. He, he should be getting up close, getting some punches off, just not giving Napa the time to work. Just try to walk through him a bit, if necessary, you mean? Yeah, well, you can take chances against a fellow who has never stopped any of his 12 wins. And he also is up a couple of weight divisions. I mean, if you can't take a chance against uh, someone in those circumstances, well, where can you? So just come at himself. Drag Napa out of this uh, comfortable style he's adopting. There he is with the jab again. They're not heavy punches. Far from it from Napa, but they are scoring punches. He's really boxing well, Napa. I mean, uh, we're, we're sitting here talking what uh, Callahan should be doing, but at the same time, Napa's doing a good job. His defence is good, he's blocking shots, his countering is good. He's a good little operator. It's good parrying as well there by Napa, using his old amateur skills as he did for once, lay on the reps, which is where he doesn't want to be, generally. Just showing his chin almost there, almost inviting Callahan in and then looking to counter him. He's almost like some dancing shadow in there at the moment as far as Callahan is concerned just cannot seem to get near him but then he's not really given him the charge or tried anything very differently has he see see now Napa's dropping his hands I think he's trying to make Callahan to come up himself a bit more so as he can counter him maybe that's the problem with Callahan maybe the few times he has uh, opened up he's come off worse uh, with the counters I, mean, I always remind myself it's easy sitting here seeing what they should be doing but uh, for me Callahan's boxing the wrong fight another round for the artful dodger for me but the rounds are slipping away from him a bit we think so don't we Jim yep certainly do um, Napa is boxing very well actually well within himself uh, if, if any of these guys could do a little bit better I get the impression it's Napa but he's quite comfortable what's going on and he's happy to let it continue. This is the seventh round. It's worth reminding ourselves that Napa really hasn't done that much yet in his pro career. He does hold a win over Nicky Booth when they were both very early on in their career. Nicky Booth, who went on to good domestic success before his more recent problems. Now that was a good win, but there haven't been too many others, and there have been those disappointments against Jason Booth and Peter Colshaw. So. A win here, even at Southern Area title level, would be a massive result, I'd suggest, for Napa. Yeah, well, I would say a necessary result uh, as opposed to a massive bit, because if he wants to march on and start chasing British titles and so forth, I mean, it's one, really, he shouldn't be losing at this level, but certainly on my card, there's, there's no signs of that happening. And we're getting on towards the home stretch in this fight as well. Going into this round, I had Napa three points clear. And Napa here electing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe a little more with Callahan. Now, that might be an act of bravado, which could 
rebound and he caught something on the inside there, there was, was a, a clash grimace. of heads just yeah. as they come forward and Nafa was the one complaining about it so the couple of clashes we've had Nafa's come off worse which is surprising being by far the shorter of the two if only Ian Nappa had a bit of dynamite in his fists to go with the skills who knows and that was lovely head movement uh, just keeping his chin out of harm's way, just drawing the leads. He's a beautiful boxer, you have to give him that. But as they say in the business, couldn't break an egg. Yeah, but that's uh, what sells the tickets, I suppose. As I, I think I said in the early stages, that if you don't punch, then you really have to be exceptional in some other department. He's a beautiful boxer, I don't know if he's exceptional. So, I wish him luck in the future because it looks as though he's uh, winning this one. He seems to have solved out anything that Callahan has. I suppose there is the stamina question whether Callahan might see the late rounds as his kind of territory. He's just stand, electing to stand and trade a little more in this round. Now, for I don't know whether he's looking to make some kind of statement to Callan as if to say, well, I can beat you at that business as well if you want. Yeah, but it's been better action in this round. Uh, Callahan's got that little bit closer. Hasn't outboxed there quite so much in this round. Better stuff from Callahan. Not quality stuff, but more competitive. Yep, well, uh, Callahan's corner told him uh, at the end of the previous round to, to become a bit more business like, get himself moving, and he tried to do it a bit more in that round. So I don't know that Napa elected to box. I think he was forced uh, to stand and trade a little bit there. So we'll see, can he sustain it? Eighth round. White trunks. Ian Napa, the former dazzling amateur star whose professional career kind of got stuck on the launch pad. And Mark Callaghan, who's already fought for the British title at this level and has been found wanting, just lost his balance more than anything there. Now, for I don't know if it's that slippery advert on the canvas again. <laughs> See Callaghan standing off again, trying the long hope for punches. They're not going to catch Ian Napa. That's where he wants him on those ropes, digging in body punches. This is better for Callahan. There are grounds for optimism. And what's happening here? Why is Napa hanging around on those ropes like that? Being nailed there. That's why, for the time being. Yet yeah, Napa should have danced out of there or clinched his way out of there. But he's standing, trading, coming off second best. I'm just beginning to wonder whether the petrol is starting to run dry for Napa. I've seen this once or twice in his past. I wouldn't expect that because he's not really been under any great pressure throughout. He's been allowed to work at his own pace. So uh, we'll see once this little exchange breaks off how quickly he refreshes himself and gets back down to work. We're going to find out now. And once or twice in the past, he's looked like an 800-metre runner entered for 5,000 metres. This is what, Cal OK, it's untidy stuff, but this is what Callahan should have been doing several rounds ago. Wrong tactics now, though, for Napa. Better for Callahan, but has Napa just slowed a little? Is that why Callahan is able to do this a bit more? Just in danger of being bustled out of this later on here if he's not careful. Napa having built up a lead. It's intriguing. Well, give him some credit, Napa, for the way he stood his ground and blasted back there. Didn't look to hide. So, certainly not shot in the coverage department because this is not the kind of action he normally likes. But now it's a fight on the inside and not a fight on the outside. And in there, Callahan looking the stronger man, the more natural at this kind of weight. He's got him where he wants him. That was uh, inside of the glove, blatantly by Callan. 
Yeah, well, Callahan's corner, I've given a little bit of a rocket. It looks to be working. Cut, by the way, for Callahan towards the end of that round. Give it all in that round. Give it all in that round. Okay, listen, listen. Let, just get there and get there with a straight punch. Punch has landed so on far. Time, yeah? Well, that stupid, on Snapper it. 76, it's Callahan it up, 59, up. says the computer. Considerably more to the head from Napa, most of them jabs I would think. <laughs> Keep the pressure on them all the time, yeah? When you want the way to the body, Mark, listen, when you got all the way to the body, look. Nasty gash, isn't it? Yeah, well, there was some untidy work in here. I mean, it's a strange place. It may have been a cuffing punch because it's usually clashes of heads don't cut uh, between the eye and the eyebrow, so it's possibly oh, maybe it's glanced the, the cuff part of the glove. It's just maybe torn the skin, but... Uh, not in a position you would expect it to worsen in the time we have left. Two rounds left in this for the Southern Area Super Bantamweight title at 8 stone, 10 pounds. This is the weight below featherweight. Ian Napper, white trunks, looked like he was boxing his way sweetly to victory. Lovely right hand from him there, thrown with speed. He's got a lot of moves. I always get the impression he must have a big collection of Sugar Ray Leonard and Muhammad Ali videos hanging around at home somewhere well it certainly has some flashy moves so we'll see I wonder uh, how much uh, has uh, come out of Callahan's tank you put an awful lot of work into the the eighth round so has it emptied the tank or uh, does he still have plenty left good sharp start for the ninth this from Napa fast jabs right hands as well taken the initiative, can he sustain it for the whole session? That's beautiful doubling up on the jab from him. Callahan, that's what he wants, a bit of body punching, trying to slow down Napper, and body punching would be the answer to do that. Sometimes the uh, duck's just a little bit on the low side, Napper. Napa yeah, boxing well here, he's finding the time again, finding the space. Obviously Callahan not happy to pick up where he left off, maybe just empty the tank a little. Nice right hand over the top, when you watch people like Ian Napa at work, you understand why AJ Liebling famously called it the sweet science. Yeah, well this is good to watch, uh, now that Napa again is allowed to box at his own pace. Lovely moves, a sharp defence, nice head movement, and you can see him looking straight at Callahan, just waiting to see what he's going to do, and ready to counter it. He's got it back on the outside again in this round, Napa. Some decent body punching from him there as well, though. It was a sharp looking right. He has been a disappointment so far as a pro. Napa, but who knows? Maybe there are more chapters still to write. It's swollen around that right eye now. Callahan as well. Just looks a little more tired. He's looked ragged in this round, hasn't he, Callahan? Yeah, I think he's just used up too much steam in the previous round. That was a massive effort he put out. But uh, for me, Napa is back in control. Now he did that well, I, I questioned his stamina uh, a couple of rounds back, but that was a good comeback round by Napa. I don't want you on the, on the corner with him, because although you can beat him on the ropes, you, you know, you don't know what the referee's thinking. Box him all the way. All the way. Good ideas from Brian Lawrence and James Cook there. By the way, Napa did win a Southern Area title at flyweight long time ago against Mark Reynolds way back in 1999 I'd forgotten that. Working, don't bully him, yeah, don't bully him. How much do you want your dream or what? Yeah, big rounds, that's all you need. This is it. This is it, Mark. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Trying to lift Callahan to one last effort, but uh, he needs it if 
Jim Watt's scorecard is right, and I've got something very similar. Napa ahead. And the Ian John Lewis, the referee, will decide, though the days of three judges may not be far away, even in British rings. Napa in the white trucks here. Interesting little tactical battle it's been. Yeah, it's been good to watch uh, because there's, there's been a nice little mixture of styles. Uh, probably, well, maybe in, in the early rounds, or maybe a little bit cruel on Callahan because he doesn't really have the experience at this level. I mean, that, maybe that's why he's been caught short a couple of times when he stepped up a level. It's simply because he just doesn't quite know how to cope with these type of opponents. But he hasn't stopped trying, and it's been a, a decent little spectacle. Been a pretty confident looking Ian Napper most of the way here. <laughs> Using his skills. Just wondered a couple of rounds back whether Callahan was starting to get to him, whether Napper was slowing up. But he hasn't really been able to build on that, Callahan. And it's late now, very late. Callahan should be looking for a big drive here, his corner, I've asked him for it, so maybe the steam is not there. It's been a little confused and bemused and bamboozled at times by the man in front of him. But how's the referee saying it? Napa thought about the move then and kind of abandoned it. Just having his rhythm broken a little in this last round. Not quite the sharpness he would have wanted to close the show tonight. At the same time, there's no pressure at all coming from Callahan. Not really. No, Callahan's still trying to work here from, from the outside when his main successes have been up close. He's fighting this last round as if it's about the fifth or something. I wonder if they forced home the message quite enough in that corner that he might well be losing that fight, this fight. In fact, we think he is. That's a lovely, sharp, fast jab and a imitation of the Ali shuffle. Poor man's imitation, it has to be said, from Napa. Though I do like his skills and style. He's, he's nice to watch for the connoisseur. And it's Callahan who gets the decision. Callahan is the Southern Area Super Bantamweight champion. Napa cannot believe it. And to be honest with you, I'm struggling myself to read that one, but there you go. Not, not even giving him a share of the last round, they still had Napa two points up. Yeah, I think we're getting used to disagreeing with referees, but I thought all the way through Napa was producing the cute, the clever boxing. OK, Callahan was coming forward a lot of the time, but uh, never doing enough, as far as I'm concerned, to win that. Uh, don't agree with that, I'm afraid. No, nor do I, but there you go. What do we know about it, Jim? Ian John Lewis, the referee, thinks that uh, Mark Callahan won that fight. And his is the only opinion that matters. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the referee would like to congratulate both boxers on ten very hard-fought rounds indeed. Well done. <laughs> referee Ian John Lewis has scored this contest for Napa 95 points. For Culligan, 96 points, your winner. And the new Southern Area Super Bantamweight Champion from Barking, Mark Culligan. Who wins Alessia, the fight by... appreciation, please, for Dapper. Ian Napa. Just let the MC finish. Five rounds and to four with one even.